Okay, welcome back. So this is the first video for, or the first effect for lesson nine. And in this video, we're going to get practice using the beam effect, okay? So again, we need a platform to walk on. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Just insert a block. And it is really far. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're looking off into space, it will, plus, it will position that your part far away from you. Uh, actually, I should have kept it kind of far because we're going to change the size and the name of this. So this is going to be platform. And then the size. Oh, and don't forget to anchor it. And then the size is going to be 12, 1, 30. Okay, that's good. And let's bring it a little closer. That is perfect. Okay, so now we have our platform. And now what we want to do is we want to add a couple of blocks to this. These will be the I put it, these will be the source, the sources for our beam effect. We need two of them. So add a block and change the size to 111. Again, a small size makes it easier to position things in the center. Okay, and um, these these will be anchored. Okay, so let's go ahead and anchor this. And let's make a copy of it. So we will duplicate and move it over. Okay, and let's change the colors on these just so they're a little easier to see. So I'm just gonna make it a darker gray. Uh, maybe a darker gray. There we go. Okay, so I have two sources and I'm going to call them um, beam source left and beam source right. So beam source left and beam source right. <clears throat> okay, so we got our beam source left, beam source right. And let's see what's next. Uh, let's get a good view so we can see both of the, yeah, both of the inside faces. And I can, okay. And now we wanna move over to the model menu. Okay. And let's see if we can do this. Let's go to effects. Let's go to beam and let's see if it works. I'm kind of curious if I can just attach this directly. I cannot. Okay, I was just curious about that. So I'm going to undo that. Um, so what you need to do is first, we need to attach attachments to each of these each of these uh, sources. Okay, so this is a little more work than some of the other things we've done, but um, not that much more. And so we actually want to do that here in the create the create section. And we want to insert an attachment here. So we're going to click on that. And now we can put it on that inside face there and on that inside face on the right source. So now we have two attachments and we have to turn this button off because it keeps wanting to make more attachments. And the way you turn that button off is by clicking on it again. Okay. And so now if you're, if you'll notice, we have beam source left with an attachment underneath and beam source right with an attachment underneath. And we actually want to rename these. So I'm going to rename these to attachment left and attachment right. And I'm using the properties window to rename them. There are like three ways at least to rename these things. Okay. So now we have our attachments and what we want to do now is we want to insert a beam effect. So I'm just going to pick the one on the left um, and we're going to go to FX and insert a beam. Okay, now this isn't connected right now, okay? What we have to do is we have to connect this manually. So uh, the nice thing about some of the other things that we've done is that it, it took care of the connections for us, but with beams, and I think with trails as well, it, it doesn't do it. We have to connect them ourselves. Um, it would be nice if Roblox Studio changed it so that we could connect these up automatically like we do with other things. But it's okay, because it's not really that much work. So let me show you how you do this. So we go to Beam, make sure it's selected, and then go down to Properties. And if you'll notice, there is an Attachment 0 um, property and an Attachment 1 property. And what you do is you click on the kind of the empty space next to Attachment 0, and I'm going to click on Attachment Left up here. 
and it will put attachment left in there. And same thing for attachment one. I'm going to click on that empty space and then click on attachment right. And that's it. We've connected our beam and you can instantly see a beam between our two um, between our two sources. Okay, and this is how we have to wire it up. Like I said, before Roblox Studio kind of took care of this for some other things, but for this, we have to connect, we have to make the connections ourselves. Okay, so now let's, um, let's get this moving because what I want to do is I want to see a ribbon kind of moving in space. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing is we need to move one of these up. So I'm going to move this one up into the air a little bit. Okay, before we start changing anything. Uh, let me zoom out. You can move this up. Uh, that looks good. Okay, now, now that we've got one of these in the air, what we want to do is we want to change some of the settings for our beam effect. So let's look at the settings. Um, so there's a color, right? So you could obviously change this color to something else. Blue. Looks good. Um, doesn't really matter because we're going to use a texture for this. But for some things, um, this might be useful. Uh, there's also a light emission property like before. You can make this glow. And we do want ours to glow. So there it is. Now we have a glowing a glowing uh, beam between our two sources. Okay. Um, let's see what else do we have. Oh, the one that we want to do, the one that I did in the demo, is I made this curve. And here you'll see we have a curve size 0 and a curve size 1. And I'm going to make one of them 10 and the other one minus 10. And that makes a nice curve. And actually it's kind of curving too much. Let me see what five and minus five looks like. That looks better. Yeah, so depending on how close you have your um, two blocks, you might have to make these a smaller number. But you do want to make them, well, honestly, you could make the one bigger than the other and you'll have a kind of crooked beam. Um, but just play around with this. But for me, for this distance, uh, 5 and negative 5 works really well. Okay. Now, let me zoom in to show you something. Notice how there are these little jagged parts in the um, in the beam, right? It's kind of jagged. The way you can fix that is by e increasing the number of segments. So let's make that a 30. And now this is much smoother. Now we have a much smoother um, effect, or much smoother beam effect. The other thing you can change, which I'll do later, is you can change the width on these. So if I make these 10, watch what happens. Now I have a really wide one over there. And I can change the other one to 10 as well. And I have a really wide beam. And that's what I did actually when I created the arch. And we'll do that later. But for now, I'm going to leave it at 1. OK. And uh, let's see, face camera, yes. We want it to face the camera. OK, that way it always looks nice and um, three-dimensional. If you turn this off, watch what happens when I rotate around it. Yeah, you can see it's flat, right? So you really do want this to be facing the camera. It'll just make it look nicer. OK, so we've got that. Now what? Let's see. We've got the attachments. We've got the, um, we've got everything ready. OK, now what we want to do is we actually want to use a, an image here. So there's a texture property, but we don't have anything in it. So we're going to go into the toolbox. Let me go to my toolbox. And let's look for images. And uh, let's see, some good images are stars or sparkles. I think I used sparkles. Let me see which one I used. To be honest, I forgot. Let's see. Oh, this one looks pretty good. Let's try this one. Let's try this sparkle right here and see what it looks like. And again, you can just put in many different images and see which one you like the best. But we do the same thing. We click the little magnifying glass, and then we click this little three circle icon, copy the asset ID, and then we paste it. Hit enter, and oh, it works immediately. Now look at this. Actually, you know what? This doesn't look bad. Um, I've never used this image before, but it looks pretty good. I like it. So now we have this moving effect, right? And we can actually kind of change some properties here to make it look a little better. Let's see. But this looks actually pretty good already. I, I like the way this looks. So let's go to the beam. So on this one, let's see. What you want to do is you want to play with the... Um, texture length, the texture mode, and the texture speed. That will make it kind of move faster. So if you change the texture length, watch what happens. If I make it bigger, it moves slower. If I make it smaller, it moves faster. 
And if you make it really small, like 0 0.1, it looks kind of like what I had before. Okay. So again, depending on what you're looking for, you might want it to move like this or like this. And let me move it in the middle somewhere. Let me make it a one so I can see what the other, the other things do. So that's um, texture length. What about stretch? Well, there's um, two other settings. Static will just make it move like this. Okay. And so you might want an effect that looks like this. Wrap. Uh, I don't really know what wrap does, to be honest. But I know stretch will stretch it, basically. And it makes it mo look more like a, a beam. But, you know, static doesn't look that bad, especially if we mess with the texture speed. Oh, actually, that's is that as fast as it'll go? Let's see. Oh, it is. You can make it go backwards. Hmm. Okay, so that's um as, what do you call it? That is as fast as it will go. But if we mess with the texture length, we can actually make this go faster. So it's a combination of these. Oh, actually, that just made it. Huh. So it just made it bigger. Ah. Okay. Well, again, depending on what effect you want, um, you can play with these. But I'm actually going to do stretch. And I'm going to adjust these until I get kind of a flowing effect. Yeah. I want something like that. Okay. For me, that, that looks good. Okay. And... um. The nice thing about the beam effect is that it shows up without even testing it. So what you see when you're creating this thing is exactly what you'll see when you play. Let me show you. So when I play, this is the exact same effect. And you can see it's kind of similar to what I got before. Except maybe a little more. There's like these lines in there. But it doesn't look bad. It just looks different. Um, but I like it. I like this effect. And then to be honest, most of these effects are for decoration, right? Um, but it looks good. I like it. And what you can do also is you can make these, uh, well, you can change, you can move them around, obviously. Right? But the other thing you can do is you can unanchor this bottom one and you could kick it around. Let me see if I can, I might need to change it into a sphere, but let me unanchor it. Let me see if I can kick it. All right, I've got a force field. I'll show you how to turn that off here in a second. Yeah, it's kind of too small. What I would need to do is make it into a sphere. But let me let me see. Where do I turn off that force field? Um, there's so many settings here. Um, oh, I think it's on spawn on the spawn uh, Spawn on the spawn location actually. Let me go here. I think it's a force field property. Let's see. There are a lot of properties here. There it is. Uh, force field duration. You can just make that zero and it'll turn off that force field at the beginning. What that does is um, in some games, you know, you can be killed instantly and that force field protects the player when they start uh, the game so that they have a, a little bit of a grace period before they're able to die. Okay, but we don't really need that. Okay, so let me change this shape to a sphere so that I can kick this around. So let me go to shape, sphere. I just want to show you. There we go. And I'm going to kick it so you can see what happens. And here we go. And no force field, you'll notice, because I turned that off. Okay, now let me kick this thing and watch what happens. Oh, okay, I kicked it too fast. Um, but eventually what happens is the part, it, it, it got destroyed, right? If you go far enough down you get destroyed and parts get destroyed and so now the beam doesn't work anymore because the other part got got um destroyed but anyway i just wanted to show you uh, you could actually um if you had like some, some kind of <laughs> wall or something it, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't fall off or if you had a ground this wouldn't this wouldn't fall off okay but that's basically how you um use the beam effect with Roblox Studio, okay? And you can do a lot of different things. Like I said, you have uh, this one here, and then I also created this kind of arch, and it's not very hard to do that. We'll do that in the next video, okay?